Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we have a special car here in the Provo Beast Garage. We're working on this 1966 Cadillac DeVille. Um, over the course probably of a couple of videos, we're gonna be doing some audio upgrades in this thing. Um, it had a system put in a couple of years ago, but it's time for a refresh. We're gonna get all the wiring out of it uh, from the previous install and start fresh. Let's get started. All right, so as we get started here, we're gonna kind of show you exactly what's in it. Currently here, we've already pulled off the dash pad as well as just laid down the back seat just for access here. But up here, we do have um, 10 year old um, Soundstreet type radio that we're gonna pull out and upgrade with the Sony there. Um, we have some old JVC speakers down in the kicks, um, just your basic replacements. We're gonna be putting in some P1 punch uh, Rockford Fodsgate, um, he kind of wants to do a Rockford slash kicker type system here. So we're gonna do some components with some mid ranges down in the kicks, as well as tweeters up here in the dash through these factory grills um, with a brand new Sony up front. So it's gonna be kind of nice there to have that there. Um, here in the back, we're gonna keep these Rockford Fosgate um, four by six type speakers here in the, it's kind of like a center channel, but there's a left and a right. Uh, we'll just get those rewired there, but those will stay put. And so those are our four channels here in the um, passenger side of the, of the Cadillac here. Everything's gonna be rewired and make nice and clean. So here in the trunk, uh, we got these huge L7s. Um, he likes a lot of bass, a lot of power. Um, and this is the insole that was here before. Let me go ahead and pull this on out. So with these off to the side, we have kind of a homemade amp rack here. And we have a four channel up underneath that, just wiring all over the place. What we're gonna do is just get this all cleaned up. We're gonna get and start from scratch. We have some nice wiring here. Um, looks like he used the uh, sub amp as a distribution block. Um, so what we're gonna do instead, is I've already started mocking up a panel here. I've cut this here, it fits nice and flat in that spot with some carpet on it. We're gonna do a basic amp rack and we're gonna mount both amps there, get them out from this spot here. All the wiring will be neatly tucked back behind this panel and then run up there. The nice thing is down the road, he is planning on doing airbags. So if we have pumps uh, or compressors and tanks here in the trunk, there's gonna be a little bit more space for that. So we're gonna keep these amps out of the way. So we plan on putting two amplifiers there we got that all carpeted and ready to go off camera and so first thing that we need to do is start getting all this out so we can have a clean slate um, but before we do we'll show you up underneath the hood and our plans there so underneath the hood here we have our battery um, we're going to keep the battery here we're going to upgrade our terminals here um, here's our alternator and the charging wire is this little guy it's like a about a 12 gauge, maybe a 10 gauge wire. Um, and so we're gonna actually put one off, off this just so we can supply our um, amplifiers, enough current um, just from our alternator to the battery here. Now we're gonna put in an SMD distribution block around the location where he has this original fuse here um, and uh, do a big three upgrade on this as well to keep it nice and clean up underneath the hood. Um, and again, like I said, new battery terminals just to get those all polished up as well. So um, really at this point, it's just deconstruction time. We're gonna go ahead and pull everything out and start from a clean slate. Just for our install, we're gonna go with some new concepts, one out wiring here. This is OFC wire. Uh, we've got about 30 feet of primary and for ground, um, matching about 10 feet. Then for our four channel amp, OFC new concepts um, wiring as well. Uh, we've got about 30 feet of that. And then we have some grounding that matches this as well. So we're gonna do that. This is our SMD distribution block. Um, we're gonna run our uh, to our battery and to the uh, alternator here. It's gonna this is where our big three is gonna come together, and then we can individually fuse these out to our various amplifiers, which we have two fuses here. Got our terminals here. Got a new Rockford speakers here. Ton of copper terminals as well as heat shrink. So um, really, this is what we need to kind of get started. We're gonna utilize his amplifiers he already has and uh, upgrade some speakers. One thing that you don't see here at the bench is uh, we don't have the, the radio quite yet. Still waiting on that to ship in just with COVID and supply and demand. Um, supply is really short right now. And so we're doing what we can with what we got. One thing I did notice here, he said that there was a ton of buzzing 
And it looks like uh, there's our grounds. We got our both our grounds kind of right there instead of to the frame. And so it's um, probably the, the root cause besides poor quality RCA cables of any interference and uh, ground loop noise that you may hear through the speaker. So I plan on doing a really nice ground to the frame um, and uh, really cleaning up um, the wiring here. So let's uh, get the tripod set up here and start pulling out wire. So I think we're just about gutted here. Um, pulled all this off. Again, we're, we are replacing terminals, so we don't need to put any of that stuff back on. Cheese is out, power wire is out. Coming inside here. Pull the radio. We need to do some uh, soldering here of whatever wire that's in here, just so we can clean that up for our new aftermarket radio. Um, pulled out the kick pods and the wiring that went to those uh, kick pods to those five and a quarters or six and a halves um, We'll do some vacuuming back here, but Pulled out the majority of the wiring here. Still got I guess one more guy left that will pull um, But uh, other than that give it a nice good vacuum here back here in the trunk All that wiring is out Good to go again. We're gonna do it just a nice cleanup good vacuum here then after a good vacuum, we're basically ready to start running new wire.
about it for this video. We went ahead and got the trunk all cleaned up, the cab all cleaned up, everything's nice and vacuumed, and we went ahead and put our amp board in there just to do another fit. Fits perfect, it's gonna mount great. It'll bolt to the body, and it's a great location to mount our amplifiers. That's about it and all the time that we have for this video here today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon just so you're notified for the next video in this series. Next time around, we're going to go ahead and show you the wiring here. We're going to run all new one aught cable and 4 gauge OFC wire for our amplifiers. Uh, we're going to get the fuse holder all done up underneath the hood. Big 3 upgrade. And really start from there. So be sure to uh, follow this build. We're excited to have this cool car here in the Provo Beast Garage. Again, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back to Provo Beast Audio Installation for part two of this 1966 Cadillac DeVille build. We're just doing a refresh on this, new wiring. We're keeping a lot of the same components like your amplifiers, but we are replacing the front speakers and radio as well. In the last video, you saw us pull all the old wiring out, give it a nice clean and vacuum. And at this point in this video, we're gonna start running our new wire. Underneath the hood, we're gonna go ahead and start prepping our uh, fuse holder and our battery terminals just so the cart is drivable um, as we kind of work on this car when we have the time for it. Okay, so we have our Rockford Fosky uh, new battery terminals here. We're going to upgrade from these guys here. Um, this is going to give us a really good starting place so we can do our one on and starter wire 4 gauge that powers the rest of the vehicle um, as well as our charging cable. Now we're not going to run this charging cable directly to the battery per se. Um, we're going to run it to our SMD distribution that's going to be up here um, but we'll show you that a little bit later on. For now we're going to go ahead and get our terminals mounted and start with that. Okay, so we got our new terminals on, good to go. We'll put this negative on as soon as we're ready to get the negative on. Um, but for now, we got rid of the old style terminals. This allows us now a one knot that'll go to our SMD fuse terminal. That's where also we will do our big three upgrade. Um, this also provides us here on the negative side, one knot for a hefty ground to the, to the frame of the Cadillac at this point. What we need to do is just really start running wire. All right, so I started running wire here. Now we have OFC one on and OFC four gauge by New Concepts. Um, but for now, we're gonna figure out a place kind of around here to do a SMB fuse block. But for now, went through there through grommets, through through grommets there. We need to still put in our, our ground up and around the one on, but just pull the carpet back here. Ran our two wires right along the carpet. Came up here, up through, up underneath the convertible top, and comes up there. So here we are in the trunk. Plenty of wire, and we're going to use a lot of this extra wire that we have here for our um, big three. That gives us plenty of space and wiring to figure out how we want to mount our amplifiers here on the rack. Now, the next thing we'll need to uh, start running our remote turn on and we're going to also run um, some speaker wire and just kind of start prepping uh, that side of the build. All right so with the radio out I started running a remote turn on wire on the power wire all the way down. You can see it comes out there heads on up and that's where everything comes out. So we got our one on and our four gauge and remote turn on wire. At this point let's go ahead and uh, start running our speaker wire. 
on the other side all the way up. Now we have to run two lines to the front and uh, two lines right to the back. So we'll do four channels total. Okay, so we ran our RCAs and we're gonna go along this um, dash support. We'll zip tie it and loom it and everything. Then we came down here with our RCAs here and our speaker wire. And this is where our other kick pot's gonna be. So I left some wire here and this is where he had his base knob previously. We'll attach it nice and tight, but we'll just probably keep it there in that location. Um, but we'll leave that those ends there. Now what I've done here is I've taped this every couple of feet. So we have both our front speaker wires and our RCAs all together. We'll run along the base knob. I didn't pull the base knob out because it needed to stay in the car anyways. But we'll run it along the uh, carpet and then under the seat up just kind of like how we did the power wire, but we'll do it on this side, RCA's and speaker wire. And then here in the back seat, in the center of the seat, there's two four by sixes. What we're gonna do with those um, is wire those up, but we'll run those separately to the back as well. So um, really at this point, it's just tucking the wire up underneath the carpet and running it to the trunk. All right, so new day, just moving on to the next portion of this install. We finished in our last segment, pull and wiring. We've got our speaker wire and our RCA's base knob wire coming down on the driver's side. we got our power and remote wire coming on the passenger side. we got our amp board in there and that's looking so good. Fits in there really nice, got everything mounted um, and that's gonna really allow us to, to hide wire, keep everything nice and clean and tidy towards the back the trunk providing a ton more space here in the trunk and we're super excited for that so at this point we've kind of finished up this area before we start hooking things up we still need to do grounds back here um, but once we get grounds taken care of we can wire up the amp rack and really be done here in the trunk um, we still need to do the radio speakers in the kick pods and work on our wiring up underneath the hood so we got all our wire pulled at this point uh, well now we need to mount our distribution fuse block combination so we're doing this smd distribution block and we're going to build a mount so it sits right down in here and we're going to go this direction we can flip the logo around it's going to sit right there um, we'll build the mount out of abs plastic and we can bolt it up to that bolt so it's nice and secure um, but on the on this end here, it's a bus bar, and we're gonna go from our alternator to one end of the bus bar. We'll go from our battery to the other end of the bus bar, and then we'll have two separate fuse lines. One will go to our one on, and one will go to our four gauge down through the firewall. So we're gonna get this mounted. We need to build this mount out of ABS plastic. We're gonna make a template out of cardboard first. So let's head over to the bench and start mocking up the template. Okay, so we've got a fuse holder nice and mounted there. 
to that bolt. It's on this little uh, ABS plastic platform. Nice and sturdy, and it'll be even more sturdy as we hook up wiring to it. Now remember, we're gonna do a run to alternator, run to the battery, and then our two runs will go to the trunk. Okay, so we got our ground in through a grommet right here. This is for 1500 watt amp. And then we have our 400 watt amp, which is the four gauge over here. We put the four gauge through a grommet to the frame. Same thing with the one on. Uh, everything's right to the frame, nice and bolted up. And that'll supply power and ground to our amplifiers here. We have our remote terminal wire coming in and also our speaker wire, RCs and base knob all ready to go. So really at this point, we can jump here into the trunk itself and start wiring our amplifiers. Now jumping back up front underneath the hood here, we went ahead and finished wiring up our um, bus bar distribution block. That'll be our, also our fuse holder here. Um, we have lead coming off, going to our bus bar and also going into our positive of our battery here. So that's gonna charge your battery nicely. Um, it's also gonna supply great current for our um, amplifiers in the back. And then we'll fuse each one individually. And those obviously go all the way back to the trunk. So those are done. Now we also did a ground. We grounded off this alternator bracket here. And this goes down to the frame. And we also did one here off our uh, distribution terminals. That also goes down to the frame. So that's where the battery and the alternator or engine ground will um, be together is right there on the frame rail. And we'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. So really this is done underneath the hood besides hooking up the negative and putting the fuses in. But uh, we're done with power and ground with our Donna Cadillac. So up underneath here, there is our grounds, all done for our battery and our alternator. For the amplifier grounds, there's our one knot ground for the frame. I just painted it just to uh, prevent corrosion. And the uh, four gauge ground for the four channel is on the other side, just identical to this. all mounted everything wired up here there's our four gates and our grounds RCAs speaker wire output we have our base amp here with our one knot RCAs base knob cable we just still need to hook up our speaker wire that'll go to the box of the sub but other than that 
This is about ready to be drilled and mounted um, in its final position. All right, all cleaned up. Got our speaker wires out for the subs. Everything's all buttoned up. Came out nice and clean. Much of an upgrade from before. Got everything vacuumed. Once I'm totally set at everything, I'm gonna go ahead and tack down our mounting bolts. That's about it. Take a look under the hood of uh, what we accomplished there. Here's our uh, battery. Once we're all good to go, we'll put the negative back on. Fuses are all in. Everything's wired. And that's about it. This actually turned out super clean. I like how this turned out. It's nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. Big upgrade. On our next video, what we're going to be showing you is the radio install, the kick pod, and we're going to finish wiring up the rear speakers. We're going to do six and a halfs down in the kick pods, and then we'll do some tweeters in the factory location up there on the top of the dash pad. Um, they'll actually mount up underneath to these bolts, which will be super nice. Well, that's about it for this install video here today. We'll check out part three. We'll post that link in the description as soon as that video becomes available. In that video, we're gonna be doing the radio and speakers. That's about it for this video today. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content all the time. And uh, post a comment below if you've had a classic car and put a sweet system in it. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next video. Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we are finishing up this 1966 Cadillac DeVille. In previous videos, you saw us pull out all the old wiring and amp rack. Uh, we went ahead and ran new wiring to all our new speakers, new wiring to the amplifiers. Uh, we did a big three upgrade. We upgraded our grounds. Uh, we did a ton in the last two episodes. If you haven't seen those yet, be sure to click the links in the description to catch up. Now, in this video, what we're going to be doing is finishing up the interior here. We have our new radio to install, as well as new front speakers. We're going to do six and a half mids, or six and three quarter inch uh, mids there on the kicks, as well as tweeters up in the dash. We get to hook up our rear speakers and uh, get everything tuned once that radio is in and playing. Now, the first thing that we need to do is begin mocking up our kick panel mids here. So we're gonna head over to the bench and start fitting up our new speakers. All right, so we're here at the bench. Now, this is the driver's side kick pod. The passenger side is in the car just being test fitted, but we're using some punch um, six and three quarter inch speakers here. We have our mid-range right here with the with the grill that we're going to be using and that will go right there in that location it's going to look great we're really excited to see how this all truly turns out um but this magnet hole is teeny because before we had a five and a quarter inch and we're upgrading to six and three quarter inch by the way if you want to see these speakers we did an unboxing of these we went over these much more in depth so check that out um it's a pretty cool video but um Here's our template. This is our hole cutout that we need to basically lay on this. Now, if we rotate this, this is essentially how it's gonna sit in the car, where this is the bottom, this is the top, and ideally, just the way that this sits in the car, we try to, we'll try to have the speaker as far back as we can, so as we cut the hole, we may be more generous to the back side. Now, we also have to be conscientious of the uh, parking brake or emergency brake here as well. Make sure everything's gonna clear. Um, so we'll probably head over to the car to kind of get this test fitted with the speaker and our template before we determine exactly where we're gonna cut.
we got those mounted. Now we still need to screw them in and everything like that, but for now they're just sitting in place. Got the other side as well. The bottom is still sticking out, but we'll get it in all the way. Get those wired up. Now we need to work on the dash pad for our tweeters. Okay, so at this point, we got our tweeter mounted. Same thing with the other side, where essentially here we use some backstrapping um, and sandwich the tweeter between the grill. We mounted it on these studs. And this end will go through an extension all the way down to the mid range. Because if you remember, um, the speakers that we went with actually has the crossovers built into the magnet of the mid range. So um, what we're gonna do is run a line from the dash pad area down to the kick and the uh, line from the amplifier will go into the mid, through the mid, then into the tweeter as designed by Rockford. So really the dash pad is done. What we're gonna do now is head back to the car and start getting everything installed. Now the radio that we've decided to go with for the Cadillac is this Sony XAV um, V10BT. Um, what's cool about this radio, it's going to fit in the dash because we just have a space for a single den. So we're gonna use this radio in that space but it does have a doubled in screen, which is super nice. Um, if you wanna see this radio unboxing, we'll have a link in the description and we'll throw a card up above just so you can check this out a little bit more. Um, but uh, yeah, so essentially here, all the wires that we need to hook up for Cadillac today is we got our constant power. We have our accessory or ignition turn on. We're gonna do a ground, which is our black wire here. And we're also going to do um, a parking brake. Finally, we have this blue white wire, which is our remote turn on. This is gonna trigger the amps that we've put in the trunk to turn on when the radio is on. Uh, we don't have an illumination, we're not gonna hook it up. Neither are we gonna do any of the speaker wires just because we're not relying on the internal amplifier within the radio itself. And instead we're running our own. So that's all we need to hook up. So really, let's head over to the car and start test fitting the radio. All right, so we got our RCAs ready to go. Since our Sony only takes a single RCA output for subwoofer, we had a little splitter there. Got everything soldered up, new grounds, um, nice and clean. And then I got the whole harness looms. We got rid of all the wire nets. So that's ready to go. Um, this is just, uh, we have to work with the, what we got. So we got this dash opening here. Um, we have a can that we've modified to fit there and uh, we're painting it at the moment black, so any part of the can that doesn't totally fit flush um, won't stick out like a sore thumb, just because this, uh, this bezel is a bit curved up, so it makes it really tough to have a nice flat finish. So we're, do we're gonna do our best here. So um, basically the wiring's done. All we had to hook up is power, ground, accessory, and remote turn on wire. Everything else is just not existent in a 66 Cadillac. So we'll keep the dash um, pad off just so if we put a piece of back strapping there just to really secure the radio we have space for it plus we have two screws that we're gonna put into the, into the side of the can once the radio is installed even for further security and keep it nice and firm within the dash so that's our plan at the moment next thing here is we got our ends on our speaker wire so that will plug in and then our tweeter goes from the tweeter output of their mid-range go up through the dash to the tweeter that we have mounted that we showed you previously so next thing we're going to do is get our kick pods just kind of in place on both sides here left and right and then we're going to get our rear speakers hooked up as well all done all crimped on 
Those are little uh, punch four by sixes. It's the same series as the new kicks we're putting in up front as well as the tweeters, which is great. Everything matches now. So really at this point, we can get the seat all back in. So we went ahead and uh, just did a quick little boot. Everything boots up great. We're gonna go ahead and get the dash pad on so we can route our wires down to the tweeters. All right, so at this point, we went ahead and got the dash pad all in. Uh, got our tweeters hooked up to our mids down below. Turned out great. You can actually see the logo through the grill just a little bit. Did a little vacuum, got everything booted up for the first time. Radio boots up great. Actually, it turned out nice and clean. Got the back speakers all in, back is all done. Here's our amp rack. Got our L7s all hooked up. So we can push the box back now. Yeah, this side all done. So at this point, let's uh, play something so we can hear what it sounds like. super clean we set our gains with the smd dd1 um, just so everything is all set and ready to go to blast down the highway uh, we set our crossovers and uh, did a little adjustment through our head unit so at this point we are done and good to go if you have any questions on what we did uh, go ahead and post a comment below um, if you had a classic car what did you have and did you have a system in it if you want to see part one and part two check the description we'll have links to those videos there and uh, you can watch the whole series thanks again for watching be sure to hit that like button and if uh, you haven't already go ahead and subscribe we post great content all the time we will see you in the next video